So several days ago, OpenAI released their updated chat GPT client. This client understands some code, can do quite a few impressive things, and maybe you're thinking, hey, maybe this could do my software development homework. If you thought that, I want you to raise your right hand and strike yourself. I know it stings, but you'll thank me. Now, I want you to raise your right hand again, don't worry, and pat yourself on the back for trying to think of ways to be efficient. Now, the reality is, I don't think that AI will ever replace software developers. And I think that the only people who do think that are people who don't actually write software. Now, I do think it has a lot of positive aspects to it, and I think it will make software developers better, but I don't think it's gonna replace them. Let's take a look at it and see what kind of stuff it can do. So, right off the bat, we can ask it all kinds of things, like, Let's say I have something that I've never done before and I'm like, how do I compare a byte array using Python? And pretty quickly, it will spit out not only some code that will give you the answer, but it also gives you a simple explanation for what it's doing. Okay, so Python's not a great example. Let's look at something like C sharp. Let's say, how do I reverse an array order in C sharp? And so it's gonna give us a little bit of explanation and then it's gonna give us some code that will do what we asked it to do. So again, these are simple things. Um, let's try something a little more complicated. What if I asked it to create a startup.cs file that uses JWT for authentication for a .NET Core 6 web API. So it understood my startup.cs, it understood my JSON web token, it understood which version I was um, looking for, although if you notice, if we scroll back up here, these curly brackets, they're not necessary anymore in .NET 6. A lot, a lot of places will still use them, um, but things like namespace, that's no longer required for curly brackets. That's a minor issue. But if you look at the code that it generates, the code actually isn't bad. It's putting in here the um, services that it needs to add and it's actually not hard coding the values in here. It even creates a uh, JSON file that stores the values themselves. So, you know, as far as the code that it produces, I've, I've been playing around with it for a little bit. It actually produces pretty decent code on simple levels. But even as it gets better, you know, so how about this? write a compiler that converts TypeScript to JavaScript. Okay, so earlier I actually, it, it actually did write a very simple compiler, but what it did say was, hey, this is only a few things. Compilers are actually much more complicated than this and you would require a lot more work to do that. But earlier it did actually try to write one here. It's just kind of telling me, hey, this, this tool already exists, which is almost a better answer if somebody was looking to try to get an answer to this. Um, so let's talk about why this is not going to replace software development. Um, and the primary reason that this will not replace software development, well, there's a couple reasons, but a big reason is the end user, right? If you've been in software development long enough, you've talked to an end user or a stakeholder in a project and you said, hey, give me the parameters of what you need this to do. And you go through the parameters and then you create something and they say, oh, well, it doesn't do this, which was not in the parameters. It was just something that they say, oh, well, when this happens, we have to do it this way, right? The AI, it can do a lot, but you really need a person there to dig in to determine, hey, what all is actually going on here and work through this process. 
And, and AI can take simple things and it can make simple pieces of code, but let's talk about, let's say you could give it to commands to create an entire application. Well, one, you would have to be a software developer to know how all of those pieces fit. But let's say the AI was, comp was complex enough that you could begin describing an application and it could continue to work through that. Where let's say you could say, hey, create an application that takes input from a user. And then you would go through the various pages that you need and how it would store it. But on the back end, an AI and a computer, and if you're a software developer, you know this, it will do exactly what you tell it. Exactly what you tell it. In fact, most of the problems in software is because the software that you write is doing exactly what you told it, and you told it to do it the wrong way. But there's actually a deeper problem than that. Let's say that the AI gets advanced enough that, it, that you can describe this process that you want it to write code for, and it could actually write this chain of events that happens. Well, let's say something in the middle isn't working right. Or let's just say when the input goes in and the output comes out, something's not right. How do you describe to the AI, how does the AI figure out what's not happening right? Like if you said, hey, I entered this date as January 1st, but it should have given me an error saying this wasn't available until after February. Or there's a lot of nuance that happens in software and in, in, in requirement gathering that unless you can explain that to the AI specifically and with such clarity that it spits out exactly what you want, in the end, you still need somebody to be able to go into the code and figure out, okay, where is the disconnect here? What am I saying that it's misinterpreting? Um, where I do think AI could eventually go, and which is kind of a cool thing, I think AI could potentially become more and more like what we see with Jarvis in Iron Man, where it can do certain things, but if you look at the example of Iron Man, he builds all the stuff and he has Jarvis do parts of it, simpler parts of it. But uh, I realize we're talking about a fictional character here, but in the movies, um, Tony Stark, he still does most of the development work. He just tells the AI to do this piece and this piece and this piece, and the AI kind of assembles and does what he's telling it to do, but he's still the one going through and doing the iterations and making sure it's all coming out the same in the end. And I think you still will need that making sure it's all coming out right in the end. I don't think you can get away from that. I don't think AI will ever get away from that. Now, even though I resorted to violence, I think this is actually a great tool to help understand things as part of your homework, maybe even assist in some of your homework, but you still have to understand what's going on behind it. If you only understand how to use the AI, but don't actually know what's going on behind it, as soon as you get into a real world situation where something actually needs fixed and you need to understand what's going on underneath the hood, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So. In the end, I think it will be a tool that developers use. Think of all the boilerplate code that this thing could write for you. Like, I need a. How much easier would it be to generate a class to be able to say, generate a class using C sharp that has an ID integer, it has a name string, and you could give it a list of stuff, and it could generate that code for you. I think that's the type of tools we're going to get from this. Um, but I don't see it completely replacing developers completely.